You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. Yes, it's the Finnish Football Show. I'm Mark Wiltshire, and this is another one of those Finnish Football Shorts episodes, maybe. We'll see. Um, we've got a, a special guest. I've got two guests today. Um, one you can see next to me here. This is Lady Sato. You, the listeners to the show have heard me talk about Sato before. And we have another guest here today, Susanna Lilianda, uh, who has recently just published her master's thesis and I did a quick Google Translate, Susanna, uh, and the thesis is Women's Experiences of Supporting Men's uh, Club Football, a case study of Seinejoki Football Club Supporters Group, uh, Kloppit. So, Susanna, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much. Um, I think this is going to be interesting for me to hear what you learned and also to, for, for us to hear Sato's experiences. And if it's interesting for me, then I hope it will be interesting for the listeners as well. Um, can you give us a brief introduction to your thesis? Yeah, definitely. So um, uh, my thesis was a uh, social sciences of sports uh, thesis. So uh, in the University of Uvascula. And the purpose of this uh, study was to examine what kind of experiences do the women in support group uh, Klopit of Veikkausliiga team uh, Asiko have on supporting football. And um, I had four research questions, uh, which were firstly, how have the women socialized into Klopit? And secondly, how do the women see their football spectator identities? And thirdly, what is the typical supporter behavior like for the women in Klopit? And fourthly, what kind of gender-related assumptions have the women encountered when supporting football? Okay, that, that should give us plenty to talk about. I think 20 minutes is going to be nowhere near long enough. <laughs> um, are, you, are you a football fan or do you follow any other sports as a, as a kind of fan? Uh, yeah, actually, I've been an Arsenal supporter since the early 2010s, I think. Oh, I'm so and... sorry. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> although Rich Rich from the Finnish Football Show will be punching the air now because you're one of his. <laughs> well, yeah. And how did that start? Yeah. How did you become an Arsenal fan? Well, my dad's a, long, a lifelong Arsenal supporter, so it kind of led me into the same same disaster, so to speak. <laughs> well, we're recording yeah. this in early 2023, and in general, things are going pretty good for Arsenal right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about other other clubs within within Finland? Well, um, I'm sad to say that I I don't have any uh, favourites in Finland. Uh, I'm from Mikkeli, uh, where they play the second division or mm -hmm. the first division. How do you see it? Um, and um, at the moment, I'm living in Yvaskula where Yiko are playing Ukkonen the next season. So um, not a Veikaus Liga team. No, but, in, but again, yeah. you're, you're pushing all the buttons today, Susanna, because mm -hmm. Keke, who's one of the other presenters, he is, um, his wife's family are from Uvascular and Keke is a Yiko fan. So you're, you're, you're in all the right, all the right areas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then in that case, if, you, if you're not sort of, have a connection directly to a, a, any kind of team over over here in Finland then why why did you choose this topic for the thesis that's a good uh, question so um uh, i've played football for 7 years and um i've been working for a football club in Mikkeli uh, and engaged in volunteer work and um i've always been interested in the fandom side of of this sport and and when i um began the studies in Uvascula, I very quickly um, became interested in, in fandom, in, in football, and it just kind of happened, so to speak. Um, and, and therefore, why did you choose Asiko? Uh, you're from Mikkeli, you're living in Uvascula. How did you come to be up here in, in Seinejoki research, doing this research? 
So I uh, wanted to do a case study on women as supporters of Veikkausliiga. And firstly, I sent a que query to most of the supporter groups of Veikkausliiga teams in order to map out some of the numbers of women in supporter groups. And then um, actually Lari Paski, uh, supporters liaison officer of uh, SEK, replied that the supporter group Globits of SEK have at least 40 women in their ranks. And he offered to help recruit the uh, participants for the study. So it was an easy, uh, easy option to choose. Yeah, it's lucky, lucky <laughs> for us. Larry, Larry is part of my origins story when it comes to ASIQ, or maybe we'll come to that a little bit, yeah. a little bit uh, later in the in our conversation. Um, so did you identify many differences or, or different types of fans among the among the Kloppit supporter group? Or among among football support groups in general in Finland? Uh, well, not really. Um, the seven of the participants that I um, interviewed, they were um, uh, really similar in many ways, so that they were really all like really loyal to to Asiko and um, football was an important part of their everyday lives. But of course, uh, always there are individual differences um, inside of the group. But um, I can't really speak for other supporter groups in Finland. Um, we don't have much research on that. Do, do, do you have any uh, feeling about the, the 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 concept of different types of supporters in general in in Finnish football in the football world in in general? Yeah, actually, um, one of the um, theoretical viewpoints for my study was the yes, um, uh, Richard Giulianotti's uh, sociological taxonomy from uh, 2002. So that's a um, kind of an old old taxonomy, but it gives uh, good guidelines to the differences between these um, uh, these. Uh, fans or supporters or followers or planners or hooligans or whatever. In the beginning of this study, I was thinking that the uh, club it could all be like supporters and not not fans or followers or anything like that that they would how identify you, as. How, yeah. how do you differentiate between those? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um. Well, um. I think that the fans uh, could be like um. Um. Not necessarily. Um fans of local teams, probably fans of teams in, in other countries, such as uh, the Premier League, or um, they could have like this commercial relationship towards the club, or um, the relationship uh, wouldn't be necessarily um, quite as strong when compared to supporters who can have like this a strong solidarity or a sense of locality. Um, and strong team identification as well. And also an important thing, I think, is uh, supporting on the spot in the stands. But yeah, these are all just like ideal categories. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, and, it's uh, in, yeah. interesting to hear those talked about <laughs> differently because I, I I, would think, uh, I've always thought of a fan and a supporter kind of being the same thing, but to, to hear those two separated somehow is is kind of interesting mm. um Ashiko was one sort of important strand of my integration into Finland so I've been here um 15 years now and it was in that in that first summer that I was introduced to Larry outside of a football context he was working as a as a barber and I was told to take my son for a haircut and I got talking to this to this guy and we we sort of bonded over football and music and he said to me hey you should come and watch this watch our local team and this was 2008 I didn't really appreciate that Asiko was quite a new club then so I went along one day that summer um found Laddie with this with this group making noise and thought this is how you're supposed to support football. You're supposed to make noise and support your team. And I then was, I met another British guy there, Julian, who has become one of my best friends in Finland. And it all started with 
that's you cool that, that was my kind of way way into the club um but what have you did, did did other people talk about in in your in your research did other people give similar kinds of examples um uh, about the socialization into club it yeah 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 um uh the women had socialized uh through these like socialization agents such as their friends or or significant others or um um and also um they uh a few of them had um went to the stands um through their like interest in in supporting so they had been always interested in supporting football or any other sport really and um but always they had someone to go with into the stands so actually never alone which i think was was interesting yeah so kind of similar to you yeah um, maybe i mean satu didn't didn't take part in the in the research but mm -hmm. maybe you can tell your how did you get into Cloppit? Well, because of you, yeah, I, mean, I, I know that. <laughs> yeah. but, but um, tell you that a little was, bit your story. Um, 2016, um, we met earlier that year, and um, that was that summer, I guess, because I see you had the new stadium, and you were there for the first game. I wasn't, but um, soon after that, I guess I don't remember. Maybe July could have been. Yeah, and. Um, we were champions as well. You jumped oh, in right yeah. at the top, didn't you? It was champions of <laughs> Bakehouse League and New Stadium. Yeah, Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <Since then>. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe it's me. Maybe a Ching State or something. No, it's but it's yeah, um, so I started coming, but um, you were standing in the front or second row, and I was like, I'm not going to do that, of course. So I was <laughs> sitting on my own in the way back, and um, you yeah. A little bit of this, you know, I can support, <laughs> but not like, and I was like, oh, so strange, so different. And um, maybe the second time I was sitting a bit closer, and then eventually I worked my way into where are we? Second, second, second row, row, just behind Julian and, yeah. and our friend Billy. And, so we've got our, our kind of spot there now. And I was standing there, I think, for a while, but you know, I wasn't singing and I was a bit quiet, but now I'm. I'm, you know, doing all the chanting and singing and clapping and cursing. Uh, <laughs> so I think I think such has gone through this being a, a sort of a distant fan to a supporter, uh, somewhere on the verge between supporter and hooligan nowadays. Ah, uh, no, no, no. come on, I'm very nice most times. Um, and uh, like you, you like sport. You yeah. like many different yeah, sports, I do. and you followed, or you've watched, or gone to see live sport in other in other live sports before. What what have well, you done baseball, before? Obviously, coming from Kite, so and that was my my sport when I was young. I was playing baseball, but other than that, not much. So how is it? How how has it felt different for you? Being obviously, you've got the the direct connection with me, but I guess you went to watch live baseball with friends or yeah, or whatever. How was how was the experience of being a female fan at baseball the same or different to football maybe there are more women watching baseball or you at least I haven't watched it for a long time now but um I felt that there were a lot more you know equally amount of men and women and I think football is still even though there is a lot of us women there but it's more men men men's sport yeah yeah, it, it, I, maybe I, that. I I think Cloppet is. It's interesting to say that there were 40, 40 people, and that was that was a a good number compared mm. to some of the others. Um, because I think Cloppet is quite welcoming. I think you can go there if you're if you're male or female, if you're a Finn or a non Finn, um, if you're straight or gay or or whatever. Like anyone would be welcomed there the only criteria is really to make some noise and support the team and and not everyone sings but most people that are there are clapping yeah. and 
I, I think it, it it was we've had some groups of exchange students that have come over from different countries and they're here for three months and Another friend of ours, Glenn, who was studying at the same time, has been quite active in bringing those people to the to the game. And you get this group. I, I, the, the one that make, still makes me laugh is that there was a group of about 10 or 12 young Germans. And there were probably about eight guys in, and four girls there. And one of the one of the visiting Weikhaus Liga teams had a German goalkeeper. And for the entire match, they were just they were just yelling and abusing him in German throughout the whole throughout the whole game. <laughs> yeah, and they made themselves very very welcome. And th there's been time. I think it's quite different. Like not every country you can go to and have a have a beer on the terrace. So that encourages people to come along, and they kind of I don't know loosen up a little bit and and yeah. bring some enthusiasm and and whatever from there. From their culture and unfortunately with the exchange students they don't stay very long but you know it's actually we're, we're talking to you today uh which is the day after the cloppet had its 15th birthday celebrations wow. yeah so last night we were <laughs> yeah. out at the stadium and there was a, a group there having a bit of a party and i was talking to someone about at the club about trying to reach out to these international students that that come here so hopefully that's something and and make them feel whether they're young man young woman or whatever that that clop it or somewhere in the stadium there's a there's a place for them as well you said that that um that the people you spoke to were that, that supporting the club was an important aspect of their lives in, in what ways did they express that how did that show in their everyday lives well, it showed um, in different kind of ways. Um, uh, for example, they um, engaged in SEGO social media and um, um, read FF Kakkonen uh, for this forum mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, all these little things. And yeah, it was always different if there, it was like on season or off season. So it really depends on that. And um, well, it also depended on the uh, match day, so if it was weekend or not, and um, but just like, yeah, just overall like following football, mm -hmm. yeah, and everything that Asiko does, they were, they were following. Um, that was not like like really a main result of my study, but mm -hmm. but yeah, it it showed there, yeah. Um, I think I think one one thing that's happened for us is that you know. After a year or two, you got your season ticket. Yeah. Um, and now your son, Topias, he's got his season ticket for the first time. He's he's just turned 18. And because we watch football at home, he's got more and more interested in football and has the opportunity to watch it with us, often watching it just with me if you're if yeah. you're out at work or something. Yeah. And 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 that helps me sort of bond with him. So we bonded over football. I'm slowly improving my Finnish uh, language vocabulary about the game while we're <laughs> while we're talking. Um, and now he's got his season ticket. So step, yeah, and he knows a lot about because he follows like um, internet, different things, watches YouTube videos, these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So he he knows a lot more than I do about the players and like Premier League and. Yeah. Or the other other countries as well. Yeah, he's he's really he's really got into it. Um what did you what what, what did you tell me some of the things you learned about supporter culture in Finland? Um well I learned that uh it hasn't been studied enough, okay. <laughs> nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> and the history is kind of unclear uh, to be to say to say so and um well, uh, at least in Seinäjoki, um, the foot, um, supportive behavior is is really good. So not a lot of misbehavior, but of course that can be different when compared to other clubs. Um, how do you see it? Do you think that um, uh, in other clubs or in their stands there are like different kind of uh, supportive behavior? Well, we 
follow like we we see some of the games on tv as well so you mm. see the other clubs and i think you know like hoy if fans are aren't they like notorious because they make trouble they bring the flares and in here as well because they've come and they've thrown i think it was them or hoy fans who threw the flares on, on the, the pitch. pitch and we had to like the game was stopped for a bit or something yeah that's that's true and i think there's a there's this a difference in finnish football culture and, and british football culture in that finland is shaped a little bit more on that european ultra style these very sort of organized groups that that sing for the entire game regardless of what's going on on the pitch and as I've got older, I've found that more and more exhausting because there's times <laughs> we just need to take a break and breathe and have a drink. And in a way, it kind of it doesn't let it it, it's, it it replaces somehow some of the social aspects of going to football. If you go in the UK, you're there with a group of friends, they're singing and then there's a break in the singing and you can have a chat or a laugh with your friends. Um mm. But in, in Finland, there's much more of this sort of, there's a drum and the drums keep going all the way through. Yeah. It's actually changed at, at Asiko in the last year or so. There's been a few younger guys come in that have sort of taken over leading the chanting. And they put breaks between some of the songs. So it's not like 90 minutes of just constantly yelling and, and singing. And I think that's that's a, a positive thing. That said, I think having those organised groups, when when you've got a smaller group of people, then having some sort of organization increases the effect of that singing and and chanting yeah. um when it goes to the to the extreme you get the nonsense like the hoi fans all dressed in black like they're from some eastern european country and they want to show how tough they are and they want to fight with the police and i've always hated that the teams that i don't, don't like in the UK are the ones that were always causing trouble when I was a kid. They were always in the news for fighting and rioting on the pitch. And I hate that. So when I yeah. see it from teams in Finland, I think it, I, I don't like it either. No. Um, but I've, I've never, I, I've never been involved in any of that sort of trouble. And, and we, we've had times at, at Asiko after the game where you see the away fans and we sort of go and have a chat. And yeah. sometimes then say, hey, come up into our bar. There were a couple of guys yeah. from Hoi uh, two years ago and I saw them after and got talking and said, oh, are you staying for a drink? You know, come up to the bar. And they were a bit like, oh, is that OK? Is it, like, is it safe? <laughs> yeah. and, and it was. <laughs> and, and we took them up there and, and enough people are interested to have a chat and you talk about football. It's not about hating each other. Um, the rivalry is good. You should be shouting. If there's enough, you should be chanting and shouting at each other during the game and then go and talk about football or something, like the, like the whole football experience afterwards, hopefully, anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think a lot of people still like women that don't like some friends from work or something because they know that I'm going to the games. Sometimes I've heard comments like, old, oh, old, old you know, hooligans and, and like that. And I think even though Kloppid, I've never seen anything like that, never seen anyone fight, never seen any aggressive behaviour. But I think people still have this idea that all the supporter groups are this kind of hooligans and they would be fighting potentially and drunks. I mean, some people get a bit, yeah. but, and I think there are women who stay away from supporting that or becoming a member of the group because support a group because you think that there's going to be that kind of bad behavior yeah because that's kind of how you if you don't follow the football world that's yeah. how you see it from as an outsider and yeah, there's the, almost yeah. never any trouble mm, yeah. well i haven't no the only trouble i get when i get hit by a ball well that's because asiko needs better strikers that's not yeah. to do with fan culture <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah now, this is this is true i think it's it seems to be personal against you because there was one time we weren't even in the stand we were walking along right. underneath under the corridor and a ball came off the field 
down the tunnel where the stairs are and flew just in front of Satu's face. So she feels a little bit victimised by the yeah, I mean, by the players <laughs> and the ball. But... I mean, when they do their warm-up, I hate being there because they're constantly like missing the goal and hitting me, I think. so. Um, did you, did, what about sort of spectator behaviour comparing how it is in Finland with how it is elsewhere in Europe? Did you get any, any thing about that in your, in your research? Um, yeah, I delved a little bit into the history of, of football and, and its supporting and um, there must be some differences that um, derive from this uh, history of football in, in different countries like um, and the uh, changes that have gone gone through, like, um, for example, the professionalization of Finnish men's football date to the 1990s. When, for example, in England, it was already the time of like hyper commodification or com commercialization, and um, uh, the supporter groups were established in Finland uh, in the la late uh, 1990s. Well, there were some some excep exceptions, such as um, uh, groups. They had supporter activities from 1960s which is like really, really mm. good for a Finnish, Finnish team. And um, so we don't have uh, a long history in, in, in Finland uh, when compared to other countries such as England. And um, we haven't uh, had to go through like this big change in this oper operational environment for, for supporting when compared to other countries like um, when in England, the football was, uh, so to say, ripped away from its working class traditions mm -hmm. uh, that had been portrayed also by the audiences. And um, uh, this ha hasn't happened in Finland. Well, at least uh, not in that kind of. No, I think I think you're right, because in, yeah. in the UK, in the early 90s came the Premier League and the and the need for all seater stadiums and things like that. And. And everything became much more expensive. Finnish football is it's it's more accessible to people with a with a lower income or whatever. You know, we we buy a season ticket for Asiko, it's 140 yeah. euros. Yeah. And you can you're guaranteed what 13 maybe home games, something like that. So it's about 10 or 11 euros per game. I think that's very affordable compared to well even even so so i i'm i'm from south london my team is wimbledon in the uk and we've been there a couple of times they they bought a new stadium in the last couple of years and if you buy a standard match ticket on the day i think you could pay anywhere between 22 and 37 pounds and that's in the fourth level of football in england so paying 11 for a home game and if you buy on a day maybe it's 15 or 20 but anyway you know it's still affordable more affordable for people how much were the because we were plan we were there at christmas and we were planning to go to see the spurs it, well it, we, i didn't even get close to no, finding a price no. but we were told about about 100, 100 pounds yeah 100 pounds for a ticket so so we decided not to even try <laughs> yeah i don't think we could have even maybe got the tickets no no i think that's i think that's right so if anyone's listening to this and wants to know where they can watch some Vegas League of Football, there's definitely seats available <laughs> and tickets available on a on a match day. And uh, if if you if you know a woman that might be interested, then bring them along and, and they can start sitting at the side like Satu started sitting at the side. And then and then, yeah, start clapping quietly and then build up to being a, a fully blown clop it member. Um did did you have something to to say also uh, uh, about kind of gender and sexism and misogyny? Was there any anything that that came up in your in your thesis about that? Uh, yeah, I actually expected uh, there to be more of like sexism um, when um, I uh, compared to the uh, international results, but actually uh, in Klopit there were like none to be fair uh, only one one of the participants said that the um um expectation that her 
her husband would have had to be there as well or something like that. Uh, she she saw as sexism, but nothing really. Um, had someone said much. something to yeah. her about that? Had someone said to her yeah. about going on, on her own? Yeah, yeah, but um, they didn't make a really big deal out of it, yeah. but just a remark, yeah. How, how, do you, how do you feel? I don't know if you've been to the game without me there. No, before. I haven't, no. Why? I don't know. You're always, you know. Well, because I'm always there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I would go. But would I go on my own? I could go because now there's a, you know, group of friends always. Mm. I know, I will always know someone there. I could take a friend. I've had some of my friends mm. come. Um, but on that, I was thinking, we should talk about your aunt. Because she goes to the football. And has gone for what sixty years, and she oh, goes on her own. Oh, my 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 aunt is a is a legend. She's a she's a, been a Chelsea season ticket holder in London for yeah, like you say, about sixty years, and now she's almost eighty, I suppose, in the late seventies anyway. She still has a season ticket. She still goes on her own. Yeah, she goes on her own. She's a <laughs> she's an example to yeah. all of us, really, um, and. The same, the same thing. She's got, she's got the fans around her that have known her for years, and you know because she's an older, older lady. When they're swearing or shouting, they sort of stop. Oh, oh, I'm really sorry. And she's like, "Don't worry, I, I heard all those words before you were even born." <laughs> <laughs> um, so she yeah. is, she is an example, is. isn't she? Absolutely. Um, and I think that if, if I was to sort of. You know, if we were arranging to go to the game and I, I I had to be away working or something, and I I sort of said to my friends, no, I can't make it, but Sutter will be there. It wouldn't be seen as strange or anything that you went without me because you're just sort of there. And and there's people we've met through football primarily that when we're there at the game, they'll come along, stand next to you, and and have a a conversation with you about the football. Yeah. yeah without giving any any thoughts of whether you're there on your own whether you're there yeah, and you're true. my wife you're you're just one of the one of the cloppid and you're someone to talk football with yeah and and when I started going with you sometimes I was like okay uh because it's you know the boys you have your friends and I was thinking are they thinking that oh he's dragging his wife or girlfriend just you know to be there mm. but no one has ever made any kind of comments or anything other than you just go there and you do your thing and you you're part of the group I don't think I've ever had to think about oh I'm a woman in that group mm. I'm just part of Plop it mm. and it sounds yeah. like that's maybe what the others generally had to say as well yeah exactly and I think that a lot of that has to do with this um, um, sense of communality within the group and um, it could be um, different if we looked into these spectators that are not in in a group um, so women could uh, like experience sexism elsewhere in the stadium not to say that they they have have to <laughs> but um, it's possible that when you know these people around you they wouldn't say anything like that that they would not even like think of anything mm, like that no yeah I think that's I think that's true and maybe maybe nowadays like women's women's football itself is becoming higher and higher profile um I've of course it has through my life there was a minority of women that went to games but I always had that example within my family um and and there were always some women there mm -hmm. but I think you know 40 within this organized group that it's quite loosely organized as well yeah, nowadays yeah. but you know the, the, within this that the identify as clop it um and and actually larry made a comment yesterday about whether what what qualifies someone to be in the clop it and he said yeah. if someone thinks feels that they're part of clop it then they are clop it. <laughs> which i thought was quite exactly. quite nice yeah. um and 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 also yesterday at this party there were if there were 40 or 45 people there, I would say probably 20% of those, eight eight to 10 people at that group were women. Mm -hmm. There were, there yeah. were familiar faces, obviously, for yeah. us, but, but yeah. that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, was there was there anything surprising in your in your research? Was there anything that you found that you you weren't expecting? Um, so what surpri surprised me uh, was that the women um, didn't want to be called um, female football uh, supporters. So um, I mean, like not nice kannattaja, which is like a prefix of of female. And uh, after after um, after the study, I think it's not really surprising. But at the beginning, I thought it was like um, there were a few few uh, members of Klopitz who didn't want to participate to the study for I used the prefix in the like um, pre-name for the study, like the work name for the study, which wasn't even the uh, the final name for the study. So um, that's so, so referring a to female supporters almost put some some people off. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They wanted to um, be called like just supporters or club it, which was one of the results of this study as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I've ever heard. I mean, obviously, club it means like, is it the guys or something in this local yeah. dialect? Yeah. But I think in my life, I've, if, if there's been a group of people of, of both uh, both genders there, I would and I've said, hi, guys, it's not meant to be a masculine thing. It's just like, hi to you lot. And that mm -hmm. seems to be how that the word clop it has yeah. become yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what about what about we've we talked about this before? This um, nice katsumo group, yeah, um, which which is a group of uh, it's a Facebook group, right? Okay, yeah, I'm I'm in that group, but I've never been active. So how is that group different to clop it? Like explain explain well, that for. I think that is a group of of I don't know the owner's wife and that kind of what do we say prawn sandwich preparer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so in the in the main stand, they they sit in the main stand or these posh seats. And some are padded, some are heated. Yeah, those kind of posh seats and and I get well actually I think the Facebook group is run by some of these. Yeah. Like okay. Um, and they are like, uh, you know, some people come to the football in wearing high heels, and I'm always thinking, like, where are you going? Like, so there is that difference. Yes, yeah, yeah. And and um, not all of them sit in that area because they, but they never. I don't think I've ever seen anyone in that Facebook group who would actually. Because some people take pictures. Um, never have I seen a single picture from Cloppy yes, out okay. So, yeah, it's just women who go there, but it's all this competition like who's going to score the first goal, and they do this thing, and then there's some sort of points, and and there's some. I guess they they have some sort of end season thing. Maybe they meet up, but I've never been into any of that. But, but... and it's not very active. I think it was more active couple of years ago okay but it's interesting that there is this this group of the, this group that is there to try and somehow activate female supporters yeah but it happens separately from the clop it so again maybe that shows the difference between people who identify as female supporters and people who just in identify as clop it mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, it could be. Yeah. And also different kind of spectating as well. And um, the participants of my study, um, they, uh, well, most of them uh, wanted to differentiate from, from Asiko Naiskatsumo, which, which I understand as they are members of Klopit. Mm. So yeah, just like Satu said. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess I have a similar feeling that I'm part of yeah. Klopit, not part of yeah. that group. And also, we we hardly ever sit down. Maybe at half time while we're waiting, <laughs> while we're waiting. But otherwise, you're standing, and it keeps you it keeps you warm. It keeps you yeah. kind of involved in the game if it's not a very exciting game. Um, and there's that thing about communal singing, clapping, whatever. Like you feel part of something. And when it's really, um, when it's really up. It, it it kind of 
energizes you, doesn't yeah, it? Exercise. Well, it's exercise as well. Sometimes yeah. we're exhausted, <laughs> like you're yelling for an hour and a half and bouncing around and clapping. Yeah. It's like a Zumba class or something. Almost. <laughs> Uh, yeah. particularly if the game's going well and we're you know you kind of but that european game last year where where we we won the home game and it was quite a hot day they had a player sent off and all of these things add to the kind of the theater yeah. of the game and then we scored three goals in the last but i was 20 sitting minutes. down for that I was with Dobby, so we were sitting oh, were you? yeah oh okay okay but anyway you, you know you can feel the atmosphere really yeah that was building. A, that was a great what what about supporting other clubs you you i'm i'm thinking now that you've said to me before satu that um you you have childhood memories of watching football at home with your dad yeah saturday afternoon premier league game i think there was a one game every saturday and my dad used to watch it and I remember particularly because there was something that I wanted to like some kind of child program, the other channel, and I couldn't watch it because my dad was watching Premier League. So I watched that and I know the names of the teams, like this older, more, you know, established yeah, clubs or yeah, yeah. big clubs. So that's kind of how. And I'm wondering if if there were others in the research that had the same thing, and if they also have connections to international clubs as well. Did you find that? Yeah, um, there were a few few particip participants who had these kind of backgrounds. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my back. Um, I think one of was one of them was a fan of QPR. Oh, Queen's that will Park be Rangers. that will be Arnold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, Anu. Anu, Anu yeah. and Marco, they were they, they were in London quite recently watching QPR. So there's yeah. a little there's a little group of them there with their blue and white stripes in the background. Yeah, yeah and also uh, one of them was a like a not a fan but a follower of of FC Barcelona. And yeah, um, a few of them also watched um, Helamarit and Huhkajat or the games of them or bookie like Norwich and yeah yeah okay so there's a little bit of following the player because he's a Finnish player yeah. and wanting to see him play yeah uh, that's maybe I, I think we've been talking yeah of course we've been talking for a very long time now um I knew this would go this would go on um <laughs> what about experiences with Hulka yet because that's something that we've got involved in in the last couple of years yeah I suppose uh the last yeah couple of years and What's your Satu's your experience watching? Because <laughs> we don't do it by halves. We we go and stand in the Pokios Carre, and we're there with the with the supporters there. So you've got direct experience of both. How how did you how do you feel the two compare? Well, when was the we went to see the France game? So that was about that was the end of two thousand and twenty one. Yeah, and it was the first time I've never been the watch the game, <laughs> Olympic Stadium. And we got there and I was like, wow. It was full and it was amazing. It was such an amazing experience. We weren't standing at Bohio's at the time. We were next to it. And I think I was thinking, I want to go there. We've been there now. It's it's chaos. It's chaos, <laughs> I have to say. You have to fight for your spot and you're like, you know, but I love it. And that kind of doing the songs. And we've done the march gone with you know from um Helsinki Center, Center. to the um, the Olympic Stadium that and there's quite a lot of women in there as well yeah there is so um uh, but all of the sort of sub subjects we talked about today I would say they apply to the Hulkiyat games as well like everyone's accepting no one's looking <laughs> down on you for being a female supporter and wondering Where's your husband and why is he letting you go to football or anything like that? It's all quite sort of... It's like cloppied, but bigger. Yeah. Even more chaotic. Yeah, well, <laughs> a lot more chaotic. But, <laughs> you know. And um, Olympic Stadium is horrible to stand. There's such a oh, little yeah. space and you're standing and feet are hurting <laughs> and like you don't sit down. 
we sat down for one game and then what did we do in the halftime? In the halftime, we we bunked into the Bocchios Carre with a beer in our hand and, and took someone else's place. <laughs> but that seems to be the way you behave yeah. in the Bocchios Carre. Yeah. So it's, you, you know, we had, you know, we had seats or seats standing in Bocchios Carre the last time. Nobody cares. Everybody just goes there and then it's like, Chaotic, but I, I suspect that you'll see who organizes the Assam Corps will be listening to this with his head in his hands, thinking, I spend all this time organizing the ticketing and no one respects my work. <laughs> we we love your work, you'll see. Thank you. Keep do keep it up. Yeah, we're members, so. and we're members. That I don't know if that makes it better or worse, but we are we are members. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, it's Susanna. Is it we 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 taken a lot of your time we've talked <laughs> we've talked through quite a, a few different things which I think has been really interesting um is there anything else that you'd like to add anything that we haven't covered yeah I would like to end this with a like a good note that the uh, results of my study uh, uh, suggest that the uh, supporting of football can be equal in groups like Clopit uh, where they have these unwritten rules of of supporting like no racism or no violence or anything like that. Um, so um, the experiences of women in in Klopit were were like all the, all around good. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a a resounding uh, recommendation for yeah <laughs> anyone to come down and watch football at Ashley Cool, but especially if you're a woman. Um, or a group of women, and you want to come down. There's a there's a Facebook group for Cloppit Sanioki. If you're if you're got any questions to ask before you come along, then there's there'll be people there that'll be more than happy to to sort of answer them and and make you feel that this is the place that you can that you can come and stand. Um, and I guess it's also worth saying that it's one of the few places in the ground where you can have a drink during the game while you're watching the game. So there's another another attraction there as well. Yeah. Um. Susanna, Liliander, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks so much for the invitation. It was it was great. <laughs> yeah, it was it's good for, it's good to have something different to to talk about. And to the one and only Lady Satu, thank you for sharing your experiences as well. Thank you, Lady. <laughs> and that's it for another episode of the Finnish Football Show. So until next time, thanks for listening. Goodbye. You've been listening to the Finnish Football Show. You can find us online at finnishfootballshow.com. Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and also on Instagram. See the links in the episode description. You can also connect with the five hosts on Twitter, at Explore Finland, at FC Suomi, at Escape to Suomi, at Kekimulari and at Mano99. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.